Welcome back to another classic spotlight. This week we'll be looking at the Ampex ATR102 and the plugin from UAD that emulates it. Just a little bit of background on this thing first. Introduced in 1976 by the Ampex Corporation, the ATR100 was the first one out. The ATR102 is basically the same thing, it's just got a few little different control features that are a little bit different place and it moved around a couple other things. It's the same internals and used for the same thing. Most of these uh, machines were two-track machines, although they made a four-track version, a quad machine as they called it, uh, and they also made a 24-track machine. It was called the ATR124. And just to illustrate the cost of this thing, in around 1980, if you had bought the 24-track machine, they sold for about $62,000 in 1980. In 2020 money, that's around $200,000 for that machine. That's an insane amount of money. But the two-track machine was their most popular version of it, and it was made for the ultra-high-end studios like Electric Lady Studios, uh, the Record Plant, Ocean Way, those kinds of studios made to print to. So... In other words, if we have uh, a Studer multi-track, like save for these extensions here, all of these channels will be fed out to a two-track machine and printed onto that. That's what this machine is used for. And that's mostly the intended purpose of this emulation. These machines were known for being super dependable and accurate. Uh, they have a, a couple little quirks about them. They were servo driven and with this huge capstan motor right here where my uh, mouse is going. This is how you could actually grab this and turn the cap stand to move the tape. It's a pretty cool design. And also, this huge cap stand allowed for it to have very little speed drift or flutter, uh, which we'll get into here in a second. Let's go through the GUI right fast. We At the top up here, we have these two VU meters. They can register VU or peak. Uh, on the hardware machine, they're just VU meters. We also have these two knobs up here. This is the input, the record, this will set the level going to the tape. This is the reproduce, which is the output level. A little bit of trick here on the plugin. If, you, if you're moving this around a lot, changing the settings, you can click on record and it will go back to its default position. Uh, same with reproduce. On the left side here, we have a closed top or we can open the top. We'll get into those settings here in a second. Uh, we have link or unlink. That means that what I do to the left side will also happen to the right side. If I undo that, then I can actually change the record level or the input or output level on one side uh, versus the other. Down here at the bottom, we have the emphasis EQ curve that is applied to the tape, the NAB for North America and the CCIR for European spec. Over here, we have tape formulas and calibration levels. We have the tape size. And at the bottom, we have monitoring selectors. We can listen to the sync head. We can listen to the input. Uh, by the way, the input is the signal coming into the machine with just the electronics, but no tape. The sync head is the, the head that comes before the repro head and is used for, this is not used very often. It's actually pretty low fi. If you wanted to get a low fi signal, you would use the sync head. That is the head that if you wanted to record something at the same time you were listening to the machine, you would use that. The repro head is the reproduction. That's the playback head. That's the second head or third, if you're counting the erase head, underneath this cover right here. The through switch is basically a bypass. You'll notice that the bypass light comes on when I click through. It will also come on if I click the off button. That's two ways to do basically the same thing. If I click the through button though, I still have uh, access to the VU meter so I can I can monitor input or output without having the sonics of the tape or the electronics on it. Repro is the normal way we would listen to this machine. It is being printed to the tape and we are listening to it come back off the tape that way. So let's dive under the hood here and get familiar with what's going on. We have several sections to deal with down here. This is a pretty deep plugin and it takes a while to get used to it but let's tackle this right off the bat over here. The left and the right shelf EQ this is an EQ for the signal coming into the tape machine that is being fed to the tape. Uh, we have a shelf for the high, we have a shelf for the low. We also have a repro high frequency and a repro low frequency. These are EQs for the signal coming off the tape. Bias is, uh, if you want to go back to the Studer video that I did, I kind of went into a deep dive on what bias does to tape. It's pretty cool. You can over bias things, you can under bias things, and you can change that here. We have noise, hum, and hiss. We have the wow and the flutter, and we have crosstalk. 
that's a lot of stuff going on right in that one little section. Let's move over here for a second. I'm going to skip the middle section and come over to the noise part. We can turn the noise completely off or we can turn it on and then adjust how much hum and hiss we have with these two screws. A lot of times I leave that off. This is a pretty cool section, the transformer. The original machine came with a couple of isolated transformers, but a, a common customization was to remove those transformers and you can do that here. I like to leave them on. Transformers, they give a little bit of heft to the sound and that's, that's kind of the reason we're using the tape machine in the first place. We have wow and flutter control where we can turn it off or we can turn it on and then regulate how much we want of those sounds right here. We also have the same control on the crosstalk. Again, if you are moving this around, say the crosstalk, and you're, you're kind of fiddling around with different positions and you get lost, just click on the crosstalk and it goes back to the default position. This section here is a totally different uh, part of the plugin. This is the tape delay. We'll get into that in just a second. In the middle part though, this is the auto cow. And I went through auto cow a lot in the studer video if you want to go back and, and look at that. But essentially this sets up the tape machine to be at its optimal performance for whichever tape type we're using with the EQs and the bias. So if I were to go to the 250 tape, you'll notice that these, uh, these set screws here change. If I go back to 456, they will change for different sizes of tape and for uh, different EQ curves. So it's a nice feature to have that already done. It takes hours to do that if you're doing it by hand. There's also a middle section here where you can manually calibrate the tape machine if you want to. And we'll get into that in a second too. Down here on the tape types, let's go back to that for a second. We have the different cal levels. Now the, this is actually not the same as a calibration that is going on over here. This calibration level has to do with the output of the tape that is being used. There are different levels that different tape formulas perform best at. Ampex 456 is a plus six tape and so is the Scotch 250. We have a 900 and a GP9, just like on the Studer machine, and you can change these cal levels for the different tape type you want, or just you know customize them the way you want to. We have the one inch tape, which technically would have a broader spectrum of sound available on it. We have the half inch and a quarter inch. I use all three of these. It just depends, and they sound, they sound great. You know, sometimes they, one sounds better than another. You can run through those quickly just by clicking on the button that says tape or cow or head. Um, this head one is pretty cool. On the hardware machine that has a head block that you can just take off. You take the head block off for a different size tape. You put a, a different head block back on and, and you're ready to go for a different size tape. So let's get into the sound of this thing right fast. When we pull this thing up, it defaults to 456 plus 6 at half inch. It's also on the 15 ips, and I have the auto cow on. This is the way it would come up at first. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this uh, Kramer Ampex tape here. I'm going to bypass this machine totally, and we'll listen to these drums for a second. Okay, now I'm going to switch it on. We'll take a listen to the sound there. If you notice the transient on that snare is very different when the tape is on. I'll do that again. Okay, let's take a listen to this on the quarter inch tape variant. If you're noticing too that when I change the size over here, the calibration of the EQ 
is changing. And that's as it should be for the spec of the machine. I'm gonna start changing this calibration a little bit here. I wanna pull it down to seven and a half ips, and I'm gonna show you kind of what I do a lot of times when I'm using it on seven and a half ips. By the way, the quarter inch tape is the only uh, size tape that gets used on seven and a half. We can still use the 250, the 456, but then we have a, a Max L version here, and I can't remember who made the 111 tape, but I will put it in the video when I, when I figure it out. I'm gonna go back to 456 and seven and a half ips. When I play this, I'm gonna adjust the repro high frequency. I think you will see what I mean by moving it a little bit makes a world of difference. I'm going to go back to the 15 inches per second and we'll move through the tape head sizes and let you hear the difference in these. That's a pretty big difference in the tone of what's happening just from the tape size and the auto calibration of the machine uh, for that formula. Let me head back over to the uh, 250 tape right fast and we're going to start on the one inch tape and what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off the auto count and move the EQ on the repro head down a little bit and we'll listen to each with the same settings. pretty big difference. Now a lot of times what you'll see in a big studio is not using it at 15 ips, but using it at seven and a half ips for the effect of the head bump being lower in the frequency spectrum, or at 30 ips to just get sort of a glue going. And so I'm gonna turn auto cal back on and we'll listen to this with the 456 tape. Uh, and I'll run down these sizes again at 30 ips. fantastic okay one more thing on these tape speeds I can actually come down here to the three and three quarters ips and we still have the two max L and the other one uh, tape formulas at our disposal here the three and three quarters ips will have a lo-fi effect and uh, you can adjust all the frequencies over here as well and this one is also only available on the quarter inch tape This is really useful on, say, a drum bus. If you want to tamp down the, the super high frequencies of cymbals, you can put it on this setting. Let's move over here to the manual calibration right fast. Uh, this plugin gives me the ability to do my own calibration of the machine, which is sometimes helpful. Let's say if I'm on the 456 tape, I'm using the one inch uh, size at 15 ips. I can actually calibrate this machine if I go to the out, if I make sure this is on output and this is on VU. If I turn this knob here, we will get the test tones uh, for calibration at specific tones that we want to calibrate to. I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to turn this mix bus down because these tones get pretty loud. So 1K. 
Usually what I had always worked with was 110K, so let's actually use those two. What we're looking at here is distortion level. We can move the bias of this machine to change the distortion level the way we would like. Now, if I get lost again, I can just click on the, the bias word here and it'll go back to the default position. Uh, around 0 0.1 is fantastic. I can make it even cleaner if I move it a little bit, but this bias m movement will change what happens with the distortion at different uh, frequencies. So I'm gonna hit that again and we'll hit 10K. Great, that's a, that's a very low, <laughs> that's a very low distortion at 10K. We can go in between in this uh, particular setting here. I'm gonna raise the level of that frequency and see what happens. Okay. 100 hertz, go to plus four. Right, now this MRL setting here is what I can use to make sure that the test tones, I'm gonna turn this all the way off. I can use this to calibrate the test tones at certain frequencies. Say for instance, if I want to use the high frequency I want to calibrate this high frequency to the 10K, which is what would normally happen. I would like it to read somewhere around zero. We can make it lower or higher. Actually, it's usually a little bit below zero on a properly calibrated machine. So let's see what they've done here. Yeah, it's a little bit low. Now, if I go down to 100, we're also a little bit low. Let's go to 1K, the in-between marker here. Yeah, that's closer. So w that's a normal calibration for the machine, but I can change it if I want to. I can make that a little bit less uh, present, and then I can do the same thing up here. I could actually change this a little bit and see what happened. Yeah. Now I can use these 10K, 1K, and 100, which is the, those are the normal frequencies to use on an MRL tape. Uh, to change the frequency of what's happening here. I can uh, make a setting where it's dead on zero and then save that setting if I want to, or I can go back to the uh, standard. So you can actually do this yourself, but the AutoCal is there to save you all the time that it would take to do that. You just put the plugin on, hit AutoCal. If you don't quite like the sound, you can quickly change using these set screws. Okay, one more thing on this plugin, which is pretty awesome, is the delay. If I set this up, I'm going to get rid of this for a second. Remove, and I'm going to come over here to the Echo Rec bus, and I'm going to uh, power all these things. I had to use all of these things to get an Echo Rec sound. Uh, I'm going to put the Ampex on that bus, and we're going to turn this delay on. Now, as soon as you turn it on, you'll see uh, a percentage dry and a percentage wet. And so that's pretty obvious what that means. It's 50% of the effect and 50% of the signal. If I'm using this on a send and return, I'm probably just going to put that all up on 100%. Uh, and this will default to the proper millisecond of the tape speed you're using, and then you can change it. Uh, after you find something close to what you want. So for instance, if I'm at seven and a half ips, we're at 248 milliseconds. At 30 ips, we're at 62. Uh, most of the time it was 15 and then move around uh, according to that. So let's try that right fast. I'm gonna hit this uh, snare and we're gonna adjust this a little bit. I'm, I'm actually only gonna use the, the snare top for this. So the snare top is being fed to a bus with the ATR-102. We're listening to 100% wet at 124 milliseconds. So that's the 15 ips setting on a 456 tape, and it sounds like this. Now I can move this up and down. Let's try at 134, 144. This is about where the Beatles use their slapbacks.
Now, that's not the only thing this is useful for. If I come back over to the uh, output section here on the mix bus, uh, I'm going to put another, actually I'll just drag this over here. I'm going to mix in a bit of that same amount of delay. Let's pull this down to 100% dry. And I'm going to start feeding in a little bit of that delay. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a, a, a lower grade tape formula at a lower speed. Now, if I start moving between these two and I don't keep them the same, we can actually cause a little bit of a spatial effect where uh, almost like a Haas effect where we get a sp like the sound starts spreading out huge into the, uh, the stereo field. Let's pull this down into the area of the Haas effect right fast. I'll keep this on about 16 and I'll move this one up to about maybe 40, 46. That will start making the stereo image even wider the more that we use of the effect. Um, I don't suggest using too much of this effect, but it can be used that way. Okay, that's the classic spotlight on the Ampex ATR-102. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit subscribe, please hit like, and more videos are coming very soon.